Hey guys, Mish here and Maya. She's getting all cozy. And today I have a super especially cool study for you. I know I always say I have a cool study for you, but today's is super cool. On what happens when you binge out on an enormous carb filled meal. And this study is especially fun, not only because the results are pretty mind blowing, but because it could also be named the case of the missing carbs, I feel like. It sort of reads like a mystery book <laughs> with really scientific language. They took a small group of healthy men and had them eat an absolutely enormous, almost pure carb breakfast. So they had them eat 480 grams of carby foods and put that into calorie terms. It was 2200 calories at breakfast. And these men were not athletes. They didn't have super high metabolisms. They weren't exercising during the day. So for all intents and purposes, it was a total carb binge. And that breakfast was made up of 650 calories of bread, 350 calories of fruit juice, and somehow 1,200 calories of jam. And that was 93% carbs, 5% protein, and 2% fat. So almost pure carbs. And the researchers wanted to know what exactly happened to all these carbs throughout the rest of the day. Did the men burn them? Did they store them as fat? Or none of the above? And so the big question results from the fact that they burned only about 850 calories during the day because they were sitting around hooked up to a machine that measured what they were burning. And they ate 2200 calories for breakfast. So the question is, where do the remaining 1350 calories go? So of those 850 calories that the participants burned during the day, 65% of that came from carbs, 15% of that came from protein, and somehow 20% of the total energy they burned that day came from fat. So just let's keep in mind, they only ate 2% of their breakfast from fat, which is very few calories of fat. And yet 20% of the calories they burned that day was fat. So that should have us saying, hmm, first of all. And so next, the researchers looked at how much fat the participants made from the carbs. So this is called de novo lipogenesis. It's a very inefficient process and very rare, even though the fitness industry would have you believe that you are constantly converting all your carbs into body fat. But these researchers found that in the first five hours, during which we can assume that the participants absorbed all those carbs and don't have any left to digest, they only made 0.4 grams of fat on average. That is equal to about three and a half calories of fat that they made from the 2200 calories of carbs they ate that morning. And during the full 10 hour period, they made two grams of fat, which is still pretty negligible. And so the math comes out to, they ate eight grams of fat, they made two grams of fat, but they burned 17 grams of fat. So it looks like there's seven grams of fat that they're burning that are coming from somewhere in the body, which we can assume is fat stores because that's where all your fat is. So the first fascinating conclusion from this study is that they actually seem to have burned body fat from eating an enormous bingy carb breakfast. But it gets even more interesting. So after the full 10 hour day, participants only burned about 130 grams of carbs. So that left 350 grams mysteriously unaccounted for. And the options for things that we know can happen to carbs, or things that we know so far, are that they can be stored as glycogen, they can be turned into body fat, they can be excreted in your pee, or they can be burned and you breathe them out as carbon dioxide. So the researchers were able to eliminate three out of four of these options because through their methods they could tell us that it was not stored as body fat, it was not peed out, it was not breathed out as carbon dioxide, and actually the other option is that it could be just hanging out still in your bloodstream is glucose, which they also found was not the case. So the only thing that leaves us with is that it was stored as glycogen on their bodies. Which is a pretty unsatisfying answer because they <laughs> had no explanation. You could tell the researchers were kind of fumbling around being like, where did these carbs go? But just by the process of elimination, they assumed that it got stored as glycogen. In fact, they even recalculated their equations to try it more conservatively to see if the results lined up because <laughs> I'm guessing they did this because they were pretty shocked. And they actually found that with the more conservative measurements for this respiratory quotient, which is how they're measuring what you're burning, they would conclude that you actually breathed out more carbs and turned fewer carbs into fat. So that 
two gram number we got, where they only converted two grams of carbs to fat, would actually have gotten lower with the more conservative estimate of carbohydrate burning. So, it remains a mystery. And also from their blood sugar calculations, they pointed out that the blood sugar rise that they saw from this starchy breakfast was much lower than you would expect for an equivalent amount of sugar, because this lab that these researchers are in also does a lot of studies where they just give participants glucose in water, and they see much higher blood sugar rises than this starchy breakfast, even though this starchy breakfast was very refined. So this is just another point for the fact that starches, especially whole food starches, do not spike your blood sugar as much as people would have you believe. And so you may be asking, hey, this study was just one meal. How does this relate to a high-carb diet over time? They cited a study in the paper that seems to answer that question. However, it is from 1963 and I cannot find it on the internet, but I'm gonna keep digging. But from what they cite, it looks like that these results have actually been seen over a longer period of time too, where you are not turning carbs into body fat. In fact, the researchers talk about how in a series of other studies, they have never been able to get carbs to turn into fat in an appreciable amount, more than you would burn by either having to do that process because Turning carbs into fat is a very energetically expensive process. You actually burn calories in order to do it. And so these researchers and other researchers that they cite in the article have never been able to get this measure of substrate oxidation to show carbs turning into fat in an appreciable amount that would add to your body fat. And even in a mixed diet, like the standard Western diet, where you have a lot of fat too, they could not find any evidence for carbs actually turning into body fat. So what happens when you eat a really carby, really fatty meal is that you burn the carbs or store them as glycogen and you store the fat you ate as body fat. The fat you eat is the fat you wear. As McDougall says, it's starting to sound more and more sensible the more studies I read. And so their conclusion was put beautifully. So I thought I'd read theirs. I'm a big fan of these guys now. They say that fat in the diet should probably be considered a much greater threat to the maintenance of energy balance and body weight than dietary carbohydrate. Yet, for a variety of reasons, which include the perception that dietary carbs are turned into fat, special emphasis is often given to limiting carbohydrate intake in order to facilitate weight control. To the extent that this may encourage bypassing starches in favor of foods with a low carbohydrate content, such as meat and dairy products, this may be counterproductive on account of the high fat content of the latter. In this context, our results are relevant for showing that avoiding carbohydrates for fear of their being converted into fat is not justified when a mixed diet is consumed. And a mixed diet means a diet that normal people eat, which has fat and protein and carbs. So pretty much what they're saying is that people giving up carbs in order to eat more low carb things like meat and dairy, I love that they specifically say meat and dairy, is a bad thing and you should be getting rid of the meat and dairy and keeping the carbs if you wanna lose weight. So the main takeaway here is that when you eat an enormous carbohydrate filled meal, even if it's way over your energy expenditure for the day, you're probably not going to store any of that as fat, and in fact, you might actually see a loss of body fat. A tiny loss, but still. The fact that you would lose fat from eating, like, double your daily needs is amazing. And we don't really know where all the carbs go. You burn a lot of carbs, your metabolism actually increases by 10% over the next 10 hours, and even 20% for those first 5 hours. So you burn more overall because carbs cost a lot to digest, so your metabolism is going to increase when you have this carb binge, and you're going to have a bunch of carbs mysteriously unaccounted for that probably go to your glycogen. And so what that means is they're stored in your muscles, and when you go for a run or a walk or even sitting around or going to bed, you will burn those. I'd say that's a pretty good outcome from a carb binge. And my own addition to this would be if you do have these glycogen stores the next day and you eat a bunch of fat, you might find that you store the fat because you're able to burn those glycogen stores in order to get the calories for whatever you're doing that day. So my recommendation based on this study would be if you have a really carby binge, and I would recommend continuing to eat lots of carbs and not eating very much fat over the next few days, that's my extrapolation based on this study. So. Researchers don't say that, that's just my opinion. I feel like eating fat after a carby binge where your glycogen stores are totally topped off way beyond normal capacity could result in you gaining body fat from that fat you eat. But if you keep eating carbs, the research suggests you're just gonna be just fine if you just continue eating a ton of carbs and not much fat at all, or if you just go for a run or whatever, but. 
Anyways, thanks so much for watching, and please share and subscribe to see more videos. Also, if you could pledge a dollar or two to me on Patreon, I would really, really appreciate it, because I am a poor grad student, but I love making these videos for you guys, so if you guys want to help, it'd be great. Thanks so much.